I want to go back to some old notes and find a way to get you guys more information so you can start to feel better a lot faster. Um, a lot of the information on the internet is not as clinical as it should be and it doesn't really tell you what to expect. So one of the things I treat a lot of is things like PMS and PMDD and we, we go through those with women uh, but I think expectations aren't always correct. So I want to kind of set some expectations and some understanding of really what we're dealing with in a lot of women. So like I said, I go back this is uh, around 2009, Dr. John Bandy, a great doctor in Texas, I still believe he practices there, um, that, that had some notes that he presented in some of the seminars to us holistic docs all the way back then. Okay, so let's talk about a normal menstrual cycle, 28 days in length, um, or 28 days in the cycle and five days um, as far as the actual period or bleeding goes, and that's mostly accepted by the traditional, conventional, and alternative world, right? So everyone pretty much is on board with that. Let's go to the next bullet point. Period should come on without warning. Moderate flow, no cramping, no breast tenderness, no emotional surges, right? So there's obviously going to be some emotional changes, but we'll say surges means that it's more than, more than expected or more than feels comfortable. Um, and so what's important for this is most women that come in, if I tell them that has, ha, they're supposed to have no signs or symptoms that their period is coming, they'll kind of like laugh at me in the face and they're like, that's impossible. You know, everyone in my family has PMS problems, things like that. You'll hear it all the time. But... Um, my goal here is to establish the ideal, right? So if you can get to the ideal, you're going to be a lot better than if you're, you know, having uh, what I see this year is, is a lot of, uh, especially post-COVID and post-COVID vaccine, you're actually running into stories where people are having severe menstrual problems with two cycles in a month. Um, and, and just, you know, previously it was perfectly normal before that condition. So that's an interesting one we've observed here more recently. Okay, so as I said, we're establishing the deal, not saying it's common. For most of my patients, the, the, the thing that I say in my office, if we can get you down to one day of symptoms and have moderate flow, you know, a little bit of cramping when it starts, a little bit of breast tenderness, and a little bit of emotions, then we're doing pretty good. Um, if you're at seven days or six days or five days or it's ruining, you know, half of your month, um, you're just losing time in life. So I think that you should uh, really get on top of it. So sore breasts before periods, excess estrogen, right? It's creating fluid retention that estrogen grabs onto um, that water molecule and it indicates that you can have estrogen dominance. So you could notice this whether you're young or old. I had a patient just the other day that had this um, from some estrogen therapy that she was on, some hormone replacement therapy, and it was just obvious, um, but it became very uncomfortable and it was even creating morphological changes or changes to the shape of her body. So that was important to find out um, that the breast tenderness existed. Okay, excess estrogen may be due to liver not removing it properly or to a deficiency of progesterone. So this is something that I talk about in holistic medicine, but very few people are talking about it in functional medicine anymore. It's just a slightly different approach to it. So everyone thinks if you, you, know, you want to add more estrogen, add more progesterone. This is not always the true. Most excess estrogen is because the liver is not functioning properly. And if you don't address the liver, then you're just going to develop more symptoms later. This is a very old traditional Chinese kind of idea. That, that hormones are regulated in that liver system. And it's not the only thing, but in general, I would say a solid 90% of my patients are gonna be addressing liver issues if they have hormone imbalance. It can also be a progesterone deficiency. So we will use progesterone depending on timing, depending on severity. If someone's really, really suffering and needs to get better tomorrow, sometimes we'll try a progesterone in the office. Um, but usually in the younger women, so and when I say younger, and, and not to put anyone in a category here, but I'm gonna say, uh, anyone 65 or younger is going to have deficiencies that exist temporarily. So all the women that think they're going through progesterone deficiency at like 50, 52, 40, I hear it at 35, people think they're going through menopause. Um, these are usually just hormonal imbalances. They're not actually true progesterone deficiencies. When I get to the older female, when she's 65 plus, when she's eating really clean, she's been a vegan or a vegetarian, um, or um, she's just very thin by nature, or even when you start to see even older than that, people start to become frail looking. That's often where we can add the hormones or where the progesterone deficiency is a problem. So it's not 100% no hormone support, but at the same time, uh, it's it's added way too much in, in today's, today's functional medicine uh, treatment protocols, and, and it's just oversimplifying the problem that you have in your body. All right, so cramping with a period equals a prostaglandin problem, right? So painful cramping, yes, there is cramping, but the response that you're feeling that's excessive um, is a prostaglandin issue. That's just another word to say inflammation, okay? So inflammation can be helped with GLA and EPA supplements. So you're talking about like fish oil or black currant seed oil, 
Um, and those are the things that would be kind of uh, common there. Uh, for both of those, I mean, EPA, I'm going to use some Nordic Naturals um, and GLA. I'm going to use um, usually Biotics Research for the GA, GLA or the BCSO. Um, and you can find down below where you can kind of get these supplements from trusted sources and you can find a link under, under my full script account there that you can sign up for and we'll help you find the right supplements for your condition. Okay, but before you go and take a bunch of fish oil and before you go and take a bunch of BCSO to calm down your inflammation um, or Boswellia or turmeric or whatever you're going to aim for there, you want to find the source, right? Is it because you're eating too much sugar and that's creating the inflammation? Is it processed refined foods? Is it a high level of infection? Is it a high level of um, environmental toxins, right? You just love to do your makeup every day three times and so you're getting a lot of makeup toxins. You haven't cleaned that up yet. Or, you know, if you have gas, bloating, leaky gut, any kind of those issues, then the refined foods can become, a, uh, then they really stimulate more inflammation than in a healthy gut. So you may have to be more careful for a period of time. So just knowing where the rest of your health is indicates where maybe your inflammation is coming from. No one's just inflamed. I, I hear that all the time. People come in, they're like, oh, I'm just inflamed. And, and I get that. You are inflamed, but everyone thinks that it's just a um, uh, uh, no one knows why it happens, right? You know, spontaneous inflammation occurred in my body. That doesn't really happen. The body's pretty good at what it does, and it's using inflammation to create um, solutions to the problems that you've created into it. Okay, so women who are suffering from unfounded fears may need to supplement with DHEA. So I actually know nothing about this, right? You're going to hear this in a video. I know nothing about this. I've never used DHEA for unfounded fears, um, but... This is not very common, Dr. Bandy notes, right? So it's it, it's not needed by women that often. So a lot of women are using this for the DHEA for hormone support, um, as well as cortisol support indirectly, as well as um, adrenal fatigue, right? So that's what, what women are usually using the DHEA for. Um, and so just a note going back there, unfounded fears is not the same as anxiety. So he's being very specific there. Uh, if you're getting too much DHEA, you will start to become angry. This is very true. So I've seen this in patients. We only use DHEA after we figure out what caused the low DHEA in the first place. So let's say that you think that you're tired um, and have adrenal fatigue and you want to address that with some DHEA. It all makes sense. As long as you know why you got tired, how you got tired, and you've already overcome that battle, already overcome that problem. And that problem is it's, it's not just, oh, I identified that I have Lyme disease, so I'll take DHEA. No, no, it's, it's I identified I have Lyme disease. I've treated Lyme disease. I've overcome that to the large degree, and all we're doing with DHEA is the icing on the cake. So I thought I'd throw out these women's hormonal symptoms and some of the quick remedies that people go through. Try to get more information on this channel so that you guys can absorb it and understand what a holistic thought process is. Um, I, I'm really, I mean, honestly, I could be way more holistic than I am. I'm, I'm an in-betweener. Right, So I just said like we could use a little bit of progesterone in women where if you go really, really holistic, you would say you never ever you know, would add an external hormone to the body. Um, and so once again, the goal is that you guys feel better. The goal is that people feel better. The goal is that we actually feel better and then we can go complete our purpose because your purpose is not to go and treat your health all day long. No one needs to be in the doctor's office all the time. You have a purpose out there. So my encouragement to you this morning is just go ahead and go out there and get it done.